Hello, Sanctuary Church family. I am so excited to be with you here virtually to talk about our finance update and our budget for 2021. Um, on, first, I can't start um, unless I take a moment to pause to thank our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful committed finance committee. So I hope as you see this message, you can send them a text or send them an email if you know of these individuals. But many thanks for all of their awesome support and all of their knowledge. Goes out to Alex Hildebrandt, Dan Brock, Tom Lee, Elder um, Nestor, and Andrea Lee. It is amazing to work with these individuals on finance. We are going to start where we always start with finance, on the phrase that is on every dollar and coin that we spend, in God we trust. And this is so important for us because we aren't running a business or we aren't running a nonprofit. We are running a church that is really focused and have our sights on what the Lord is guiding and leading us to. And even when there are things that seem impossible from what the world can do, we know God makes the impossible happen. We've seen him show up and really be there for sanctuary time and time again. So in God we trust is how we lead our finances. We're very prayerful about it. As we go through um, both the trials and tribulations and also the exciting moments um, that leads to us and are really excited for what God is doing for us in this moment. I mean, on the next slide, we talk about despite all of the challenges of 2020, I know people are even tired of hearing that, that we have been blessed in an amazing way, almost, um, as Elder Nestor says, in a supernatural way. If you think about where we are and the circumstances around um, what's happening in 2020, both with job loss, COVID impact, and a myriad of other issues. The fact that we are able to have an overflow as sanctuary and that we are being able to reinvest that back into the community in differential ways than any other year truly shows that it's a God thing, and we are thankful for that. So we are truly thankful and humbled by God's provision and what he's doing for us in this you know, year like no other. And I am very excited to report and give some praises to God, and I hope that you all will join me in adding these praises and blessing his name to your prayer list this evening or around your table with your family, that we have had $217,000 given to care and outreach. We've had $142,000 invested right back here into North Minneapolis. And on top of that, we are sitting on almost a $300,000 surplus with an additional 300,000 year in gift that came in. That'll give us an abundance of almost $600,000 to the end of the year. We can't call it that um, yet what the official surplus will be as we have to wait for the books to close, but we are in a really good position to set us up as we start to talk about our fiscal 21 budget. The first thing I wanna share with you in regards to the fiscal 21 budget is really the principles that we go through. And they're so important as they ground and guide us as we go and discern through this process. First, the budget is always in service to our vision, purpose, and mission. We are not um, going to be slave to a dollar amount or to what we think we should do, but really to what God is calling us to do and then what we need to evolve um, to meet that call. That's why the second bullet point around really having a zero-based budget approach is so important. Instead of having a budget where I had 10,000 last year, I'm gonna have 10,000 this year, we ask the staff and the pastors to do extra work to start with zero, a blank sheet of paper. What is God calling the ministry to do? What are the unique needs that we need to respond to? How do we need to adapt what we've done in the past to ensure that we are ready for the future? And then build the budget off of that and build for what we need um, going forward, not for where we've been. Third, of course, is to trust in the Lord. We know that there are definitely times where we've um, had some trouble with san at Sanctuary with budget and went through some times where we were not confident that we were going to be able to make it in terms of being able to have the deficit paid off. But God has always been with us and always seen us through. And I will always um, hearken back to that year of 2018 where we closed the budget and it was something like $50 in surplus that came through a last minute gift. And before that, we didn't know and we were on our knees praying and God made a way. So we trust in the Lord. And we don't know what next year has in store for us, but we know that God is in control and knows what's going to happen. And then we are planning the budget as if we're going to be back to normal, um, the new sense of normal in January. That means that there is probably a little bit of flex in the budget as we are preparing um, and running the ministries, although we are back in person, which costs more than our virtual environment. 
but we want to be prepared for the moment, for the time when we are able to be back together, that we have the dollars and the funding to do so. To share with you a little bit about um, the budget process, and we go through a really robust process that involves the finance committee, um, our elders, and also the staff and pastors. So first we start with a theme that Pastor Edron sets for the year. And that really, like I said, is the vision and a guiding force for which we build behind. And then the staff and pastors do and build that zero-based budget for each of their ministry areas. We have Pastor Edron and Andrea review what's happening. The finance committee reviews the draft budget. And that draft budget is submitted to the elder board for review, discernment, and prayer. And then it is voted on by the elder board. And then after that, we have the final point of when we present it to the congregation. So we've already hosted, um, the finance committee already hosted a budget deep dive preview, and we had some great folks who attended. And then we will bring it now to all of you for official vote. So for the budget overview, I'll go through the two main pieces, and then we'll have a slide to go a little bit deeper on each of those areas. Um, in total, we're projecting our income, and what we're proposing is for 2021, our income be $1,358,766. That is up $125,000 approximately over where we are sitting this fiscal year. That number we feel really good about, and I'll explain a little bit more about how it's broken down on the next slide. For our expenses, we are anticipating to be at $1,531,298. And you're probably thinking to yourself, particularly all the kids with fast math, wait, that expenses is a little bit more than what you're planning on income. So we are planning for a deficit. Um, nothing new or different from Sanctuary. In the four years that I have been um, finance chair, we've always planned for a deficit, and we have always been able to see through. So that goes back to the trust in the Lord. So the plan deficit is $172,532. However, because we are seeing such an abundance and overflow coming from um, the surplus and because of the graciousness that God has bestowed upon us, we have already authorized as an elder board to spend $150,000 of that surplus to clear the deficit. That is amazing and a new, a new and unique position we have not been in before. Usually we have to wait to go through the year and see how things are going before we can understand how we're going to land with the planned deficit. The fact that we are sitting in such a firm position today that we can say confidently that we're going to go ahead and spend out of next year's surplus to go after that deficit is amazing. So we are very excited and thankful for that. Um, I, I will start on the next slide with doing an overview of the income and break that down a little bit more. So we're projecting that for next fiscal year, our tithes and offering will come in at about $1.3 million. And that is in comparison to about 1.16 that we had in this fiscal year. While we look at what we're projected to come in at in total for this fiscal year with all of the giving, it's at 1.7. So while the 1.3 um, seems um, a little bit more than what we had previously budgeted this year, we feel really confident in that number because it is neither too aggressive nor too cautious. It is a really nice number that shows us a 12% growth and seems in line with some of the household giving patterns that we've seen throughout this year. We also have rental income. You all know in the space next door, we have several renters and we will continue to have them. And that'll bring in about $46,616 in income. For each of those renters, they have a 3% increase that is um, automatically assessed every year when their lease is renewed and that we are accounting for as part of the um, increase in the rental income versus this year. And then last, we have Mosaic and Young Adult events that which we charge for that brings in a little income. We book that in. We'll see how the year plays out next year if we'll realize that, but that's about $12,000. And that's how we get to the total of the $1.3 um, $1 million in dollars for our anticipated income for next year. And so what's great next is we'll talk about how we're going to spend all that money to really extend our ministry areas. When you look at where we're spending the bulk of our dollars, 50% of it is on our wonderful and amazing staff. As with most churches, it's not uncommon that the people who are serving, who are the hands and feet that are guiding all of us, uh, both practically and spiritually, are the bulk of what our expenses are. 
And for our personnel next year, we have several additions in the budget. We have the addition of an executive pastor that we will be searching for um, starting in the new year, and then also a part-time media contractor and also a part-time contractor to help with all of the neighboring work that is happening here in North Minneapolis. So that line item is going up about $185,000, and it is due to those personnel items. We also have admin that is in here, which is down, and mostly because admin, we don't have as many expenses related to us gathering. For the next facilities, we have some um, slight increases in facilities related to how we're ensuring the building is prepared and ready um, for COVID and HVAC, and then also some work we need to do around touch-up paint. We've never washed the windows, y'all, those high ones. Um, we're gonna get some of that work done. But we are also overall down in our facilities budget to about 6,000. Media, marketing, and communication, so all the wonderful work that Jeremy and his team does so we can come to you virtually every day is going up slightly. And that is really to help us to ensure that we are delivering consistent experiences to you all. Connectional is down. I mean, I know I make a lot of jokes about ensuring we get two-ply toilet paper. But connectional is really down because we don't have as much expense in hospitality in terms of feeding and being able to provide snacks. We anticipate, even though we're back in an in-person environment, we won't quite back, be back to sharing food and having buffets and all those, some of those rituals we used to enjoying. So that budget is planned down. Formational is planned up slightly, um, about 29,000 over last year. And that's really due to some exciting initiatives that are being added. One is we're gonna have a leadership development series that Pastor Edrin has a vision for that helps us understand the church leaders and their lay leadership and how we can provide them tools and resources to extend that and raise up more leaders from within our congregation. Next is neighboring, a really exciting area where we have some dynamic changes. The first is that we are dedicating $80,000 to be reinvested back here in North Minneapolis. That is $80,000 of our planned budget and does not include any extra gifts that come into neighboring or any extra gifts that we can use to share back out to North Minneapolis. As you heard from Pastor Edron, his goal is that we can invest 10% of our total income every year directly back into North Minneapolis, and we are well on our way with that $80,000 designation. Also in neighboring is our support that we do for different uh, ministry areas. One is the covenant. So we get questions on how we're supporting the ECC or the Evangelical Covenant Church and doing our share to support the denomination. We are providing $8,000 more in spending to take our total up $40,000 in that area. And we're excited that we continue to be a blessing to those that bless us. And then last, the thing I will point out in neighboring is that we also have the opportunity to support missions. So in addition to our Honduras mission, we have another mission family we're going to be supporting from Haiti. And I know you'll hear a lot more about that from Pastor Edrin as the year is coming along. So neighboring, as we think about what this year has presented us, how sanctuary has been hands and feet, and how we've shifted our focus to really be out here in the corners and the blocks in North Minneapolis, some really exciting changes and to how increase in that budget to support that work that we are delighted to see come to fruition. Um, next is a category about our building capital funds. And that's essentially, we're putting away a little bit of money every year so that when we need a new roof or when we need a new HVAC system, we are not trying to have a hot dog fundraiser to get that money. It is a $5,000 fund that we are doing every year. So over the 10, 15 years that some of these long-term expenses will come due, we will already have the money to pay for those. And then last but not least is our mortgage principal. Um, we are still um, paying for both our interest for the mortgage, which comes out of um, admin, and then we also have the mortgage principal, which is a separate line item. And that is in line with where we expect it to be. So for a total of our expenses to be at 1.5 million and some change, and then again, we have that planned deficit, but the most of that will already be cleared um, because of the wonderful surplus we have. And as we're speaking about the mortgage, where are we with the mortgage? What's happening with that? And give you guys some facts and details about it. We have 16 years remaining on our mortgage, and our current loan amount is about 2.8 million. And we're paying and estimated to pay about 1 million in interest in those 16 years. We were lucky to receive a 4.25% interest rate, which was a reduction 
National Covenant Properties and discerning how um, all the churches were doing decided to lower quite a few interest rates, and we were one of those churches. So that takes us to monthly payments of around 21000 a month. That is our largest fixed cost um, that we have outside of personnel, with 11000 being in principal and 10000 being in interest. Now, if you're like me, you don't like that that principal number is as high as that interest number. So please note my nice little call out that payments to the mortgage are always welcome. And we will be excited the day we have a good old fashioned burn the mortgage party right here in North. And then last, what about the surplus? So we will make a determination on what to do with the surplus after the year in books close. We get all the expenses in from this year. We've tabulated all of the additional gifts that are coming in and tithes through December. And then we will reconcile the books in January. The finance committee will then um, do a couple of steps. One, you guys know we have a six month rainy day fund. So the surplus that we're talking about does not include the six month rainy day fund. That is a separate pool of dollars. We're going to shore up our six-month rainy day fund to ensure that it is in line with our new expenses. And what's really in the six-month rainy day fund is ensuring that our basic necessities, our staff, where we are with um, the building, and some of the necessities we need to keep operating, we have coverage for that in the event we have zero income for six months. After that, the Finance Committee will then take a look at what are some of the one-time expenses that are coming out of that $150,000 surplus that we need to pay for um, to shore those up. And then last, we'll probably have a recommendation for mortgage payment. That's a Finance Committee oldie but goodie. We always, when we have extra money, recommend a mortgage payment so that we can stop paying so much interest um, and really pay down that mortgage. And then after that, it'll go to Elder Board, and then a formal recommendation will be made for what we're going to do for that. If you want more information about the budget, because I ran through what has been um, three months of work in a few minutes, please note that you can email Andrea Lee. And we did a budget deep dive that went into a lot of the ministry line items. We were blessed this year to be joined by the ministry owners. Um, so Pastor Edrin, Pastor Rose, and Andrew were there to go deeper into their areas and answer questions. And if you email Andrea, she can send you a link for that recording of the information. So you can make sure that you feel good and comfortable with where you are so that when, if you have any questions, they can be answered um, and you feel confident in your vote. And then also you can send any questions to the elders email that will be displayed during this meeting. And then last, I just want to thank you, Sanctuary, for allowing me to be your finance elder for the last four years. It has been an amazing, amazing journey, and it really has been um, almost a test of faith at times. If we've had times where we weren't quite sure how we're going to make it, and then we were all praying together, and that we saw God make a way. So I have just been blessed to be participant in this ministry and to work with the team. I am excited to turn the reins over to Elder Nestor. He will be fantastic. We've already been working together um, on the finance committee, and so continuation of that into next year. And then we'll end where we always end, in God we trust. We are so thankful for what God has done for us. We're so thankful for how we're able to serve this community, and we look forward to the budget being in more service of that work as we continue into next year. Thanks, all. Have a good day.